we're learning new details today on on the suspect for the for the audience members who do not know about the story or the specifics uh basically there's a there's a synagogue called the congregation beth israel synagogue it's in colleyville texas half hour from dallas a man named malik faisal akram for the from the united kingdom 44 years old uh came to america about two weeks ago lived in a homeless shelter then emerged bought a gun on the street, according to President Biden. That's what he said. And went into the synagogue. It's actually just so sad in a way, Monica. You know, it shows the goodness of those inside the synagogue. Um, This guy comes up. He knocks on the window. The rabbi lets him in, um, welcomes him, uh, gives him a cup of tea, sits down, has a cup of tea with him. And then the guy raided the services at 11 a.m. while people were praying for people taken hostage, 12-hour standoff. Eventually, the FBI, to its credit, killed the gunman and no one else lost their life. Okay, but the headlines today are, and by the way, two others are now in custody over um, in the UK. Two teenagers, they say, though. So the, the plot may be growing, maybe wider than just this guy, though, unconfirmed. Okay, they... People are asking this morning how this guy got into the United States. Apparently, he did have a criminal history in the UK. Again, he's a 44-year-old man. He had a criminal history in the UK. um, And these tourist visas he was here on are supposed to be off limits to foreigners who have broken the law. Uh, And not only was he a convicted criminal over there, but they are now reporting that he was known to MI5. And he was the subject of an investigation as recently as late 2020. But by the time he flew to America, he was no longer subject to an investigation over there. So you tell me what he was doing in the United States and why this guy got a visa. So that's the critical question, Megan, and a full investigation has got to take place that is clean and honest. And we know that the FBI in recent years has experienced a lot of controversy and upheaval and tumult for very good reason. Uh, The FBI, at least at the leadership level, and some would argue even further down, um, has largely been politicized. And we also know that law enforcement at all levels, including the FBI, has uh, been um, sort of high jacked by woke philosophy and this woke culture. And you can't talk about certain classes of criminals because it's politically incorrect. Well, we know the result of that, and that is rising crime, rising events like this that could very well be part of an international jihadi plot because you do have these two individuals in the UK who have been arrested as part of this. So we know that when woke philosophy and thinking turns into woke action, particularly with the military and law enforcement, you have a serious problem. And Mm -hmm. this is the result of what we're seeing. So very, very uh, obvious and I think serious question needs to be asked. How did this individual get into the country where, as you point out, he had a criminal history in the UK. He was known to the UK intelligence agencies. The FBI so far has not indicated whether or not this man was known to them, but I think we can make a pretty good guess about that. So how did he get in? Well, Megan, what we do know is that one of the very first things President Biden did when he entered office was revoke multiple Trump orders of enhanced vetting of foreign nationals coming into the United States. So Trump put into place all kinds of restrictions to come in to make sure that foreign nationals were vetted in the most extreme kind of way. So we weren't letting individuals like this into the country. There's a reason why President Trump didn't have these kinds of attacks when he was president. So the question that everybody should be asking and should be central to any investigation here is, Was President Biden's revocation of those Trump era policies on extreme vetting of these foreign nationals, did that play a role in allowing this man in to commit this crime? Mm -hmm. Well, we we need answers. The FBI can't stay silent. Why are the British authorities speaking out about this guy having been investigated by them? But our FBI has said nothing. They won't confirm whether they knew or didn't know so far. And this is after they botched their messaging about this over the weekend, which we can get to in a second. But just want to stay on the latest for right now. Um, accordingly, according to um, the Daily Mail and the BBC, this reporting, MI5 investigates around 3,000 subjects of interest and has 
has about 600 live investigations at any given time. All right. So about 3000 subjects on their radar. This guy no longer was, but it wasn't so long ago. He'd been on there. There are about 40,000 closed subject of interest cases. um, And the FBI will not say whether this guy was on our radar at all. So if he had recently been uh, investigated and had a criminal record, um, the question is, how how could how could we not know because the tourist visa that he applied for and got are it's supposed to be off limits to foreigners who have criminal records but uh what i read in the daily mail uh is that and they had gone through sort of a, a bunch of organizations to figure this out we apparently do ask applicants if they have a criminal record and our website claims that we're going to check to see if they have undisclosed criminal convictions but it appears we might not actually do it because we don't have access to criminal records in the UK's criminal database. So it requires coordination between the two governments, which I don't know if it happened here. Uh, there's a there's an MP over there in England saying um, there seems to have been a dreadful error at the UK and US borders caused by an intelligence failure, and it has to be investigated right away. You know, Megan, every time we hear of an attack here on the homeland or, or even abroad somewhere in Western Europe, we all pull our hair out and say, how could this have happened? Well, now we've got a different context in the United States because we have a different president in President Biden. And he has chosen a couple of routes. Number one, a catastrophic withdrawal from Afghanistan, leaving Americans behind and creating a power vacuum into which the world's worst bad guys are now entering, including Iran, the Taliban, Al Qaeda, China, Russia, you name it. So that now is the staging of uh, area once again for these kinds of terrorists. Then you couple that with the wide open border and the kind of lax immigration policies that we're describing here in this context. And you have a recipe for these kinds of terrorist attacks within and on our homeland. That's point number one. Point number two, Megan, this is really critical. How many times have we said after an attack like this, I can't believe after 9-11, this is still going on. So after 9-11, we had the 9-11 Commission, and they had two major points that came out of that massive investigation. One was to get Western countries to work together to flag individuals and terrorist organizations so that they could, the, the UK, for example, could communicate with our intelligence agencies and flag an individual like this. That was number one. Number two, here at home was to lower the wall between our intel agencies and our law enforcement agencies like the FBI. And once we stood up the Department of Homeland Security, that agency as well, lower the wall that separated those two so that they could more easily communicate about potential threats here at home. So after that, we were told that both of those things happened. Now, maybe they did, but maybe not to the extent that we need. I know President Trump really tried to resolve that and fix it and and get it to a place where we weren't having these kinds of threats. But if those walls have gone back up, And if there is gross inefficiency in the way countries are talking to each other and intel and uh, and and uh, law enforcement agencies are talking to each other, well, that better be fixed and it better be fixed stat because American lives are on the line. 